Hey guys, what's going on? Today is book review day, and the book we're gonna be reviewing, well, summarizing, you can say, is Time Warped by Claudia Hammond. In this book, Time Warped, the reason why I, it has nothing to do with relationships, but the reason why I wanna read it is because I wanna understand how time works and our perception of time. And with reading this book, came to understand that time is very, it's largely affected by our emotions. So the way we feel is the way we perceive time, whether that time is going faster, time is going at a slower pace. Because in our brains, time can only go two, two ways. Time never really stands still. And the only people that experience the time as standing still are people who have been through like very traumatic events whether that's a car accident, motorcycle accident um, or any kind of like accident similar to that where it's like you, you, you stare death in the face and if you ask those people those are the ones that see time as maybe it might have stopped during during the event and with that we learn in the book that time is deeply subjective and it's an illusion and you've probably heard that before that time is an illusion it's something that us humans have created animals really don't have a sense of time if you think about it only humans do or any other uh, race that's out there if you believe in that that there's other races out there aliens and all this maybe they see time as well but in terms of humans, we see time as an illusion, something always moving forward as if we live in a river of time. And most of us live in a, we, we you know, as I've probably said before, humans are a habit, habitual creature. We love habits. We stick with routines. There's, there's nothing more we love. When we are out of our routines, um, as my notes say here, it disrupts our concept of time. And I can vouch for this personally because ever since I left my job and I'm waiting on my next job um, to start, it's as if time, some day, some weeks feel fat, like they just went and they all like mingled in one. And other times, they, they go really slow. So like, for example, today, I literally thought it was Thursday all day. And, you know, I, I, I had stuff to do this morning. I come back, I come back, go to sleep, I wake up and I'm like thinking it's Thursday and tomorrow's Friday. I look at my watch and it says it's Wednesday. I'm like, whoa, like, my time, my perception, my, the way I see time right now, because I haven't worked, I don't really have a set routine for my day-to-day, -day. It's, it's how my time, my concept of time is all over the place. So that's a great example of time and how we see it as human. And with that, in the book, there's a lot of studies and a lot of um, focus on different kinds of scientists and different researchers that have gone into this. There's a whole, just like everything in the world, there's so much research going into time perception to the point that scientists believe that our brain measures time in different ways, whether that's through uh, impulse pulses that are sent to the brain, so electric pulses or heartbeat. So our brain measures. Even without a clock on you, we will always find a way to measure time in length, um, in numbers. There's so many different ways that our brain knows to measure time, as even though it, it is moving forward. Not only that, but they think that depending on the situation, the context of what you're in, different parts of the brain is activated when with time so when you think when you're doing a specific activity a different part of your brain may be accessed that's seeing time go differently um whether that's you know you're traveling and you see time in a different way because you're in a different 
location. If you go from a city like New York, with fast pacing time, it's something you feel, you know, it's very valuable because because it's so fast paced. You think that days just go. Versus if you go to a place like Costa Rica, where everyone's kind of relaxed, or like the Caribbean, where people are more relaxed and like slow down. And time for you will feel slow down. I mean, if you're there for a while and you get into the hang of that lifestyle. And there's a lot of great stories in this book from how people tested their perception of time. One said story is Michael Sifre. He's a gentleman. He was like about 16, very young. He decided to do this experiment where he would live underground under the French Alps with no sunlight, no electricity, and no, rarely any human contact. And he was to stay there, I believe, three months. You can look up his name. I'll put in the, sh the notes for, of what I took for this video in the description below so you can find it there. And he stood there, and it was amazing because he lost the concept of time. He he seen himself, because he wrote a diary, of course, seen himself as he was living outside of time. So this is the verb of time. is as if he was living over here. He had no concept of time. He lost the concept of time. He, and he would have week, I believe it was like weekly calls to the, the two men watching him just in case anything ever happened. You know, they would pull him back up or whatever. So his life wasn't in danger. He, he would phone them late at night thinking it was daytime. So his sense of daylight was reversed. So he thought day was night, night was day. Because he lived kind of like in an ice cavern, it was always dark, damp. So he never felt any heat. His feet were always damp. The bed he slept on was always, felt always like it was wet. He almost went colorblind because he, his eyes were too adjusted to the darkness. Of course, during the, during the experiment, he felt very lonely. He grew tired of it, but his sense of time slowed down exponentially. That when the his time went up and they went to go get him, he was in shock because he thought he still had 25 days left. And that must suck because he felt like he lost 25 days of his life in his mind, but really he didn't in real life. And I just want to read a quick excerpt from the book that kind of explains um, how we think of time and it's something that I think we've all been through. So I'm gonna read this real fast. Think of a journey and how the way back always seems shorter. With fewer new memories to fill the time, everything seems familiar and it seems as though the distance is much shorter. Unless, as a 19th century philosopher and psychologist William James observed, you are retracing your, retracing your steps because you have lost something. Then it seems endless. Time plays tricks on the mind. And that is, I'm sure, something you've always been with. I've dealt, I probably had that happen to me today. Coming back from the city, it felt like it was a quick ride. And it took a nap, so it was probably even quicker because of the nap. But that's something we all go through. And with that, I want to share a story of Chuck Berry. He was a, he's a gentleman who's pretty much a professional like skydiver he does like hang gliding he does anything where you fall from the sky um base jumping all this stuff and the story he had was he he jumped uh, i think it was a base jump and he let his parachute go first parachute failed second parachute failed he had nothing from there and the most interesting part is during that time mind you this man has jumped thousands of time he's been doing it for like it was like 15 20 years a lot of years it was in double digits so he knew what he would have to do in case that ever happened to him um when he, if he was free falling like the way he was and in that sense he says time slowed down the whole ordeal took around 30 to 40 seconds in total from the time he jumped to everything else to him pretty much landing in some trees. That's how he survived, by landing in trees. They broke his fall. He didn't even come out um, with anything broken or anything severe, mostly like bruises and everything, which is pretty, like, uh, pretty 
it's like a miracle kind of thing. But it's because during his fall, his brain was moving at such a fast pace that when he he was in the air, it's as if it knew what to do. You know, for him to look around, he radioed. He doesn't even remember radioing it in to them twice twice to tell them what he was doing what was going on and how he was going to get out of this uh, situation and he survived because of all that experience and the brain slowed down the, basically the brain sped up and time for him slowed down through his perception of time slowed down just so he can get everything together and come up with a solution in that given situation and I used situation twice but it, it was astounding I was reading that part and I was just blown away that 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 happened so now you know if some if you want to slow down time completely you got to be in like a life or death situation and we then you want to go towards the other way of time so at that time that that's a way of time slowing down another way of time slowing down that they've noticed through studies is when a person is depressed sick bored if you have um you're very scared of something in a given moment adhd um if you feel rejected all these slow down time and it's insane how basically what is what i wrote here is the pre when a person is depressed the present and the future become bound to one another in suffering time even decelerates and days drag and through all of the emotions or the feelings you have that I just listed before, you have your sense of time just slows down. Have you ever felt sick and you felt like the days just dragged even though you're in bed, you can't really do anything, your body's weak, and it's just like the day just won't end. You just wanna sleep, you wanna get the sickness over with. But then after you're you're healthy and you're fine you were sick for a week and then you're healthy you're fine you felt like that week was what happened during that week and that's because no new memories were created there was no novelty so your brain kind of just like bunches everything together and it's just like that well nothing happened so whatever like anything you remember is probably something like oh you know i i don't know i don't know anything any interesting that happens during a sickness but maybe you know you had an amazing soup while you were sick that, that cleared you up and you just felt like you could breathe again that's probably something you remember but other than that you don't really remember you know you probably watch some tv shows or whatever the case is you remember those but you don't remember how like how you felt really yes you must have felt like crap but you don't remember any specifics the kappa effect so what you do in the kappa effect is you take three light bulbs and with the light bulbs, and I'm just reading this because I don't know this by heart. You switch them on one at a time and ask people to guess the time between each light. So the more spread out the lights are physically, the longer people will say the duration between the light was. Then you have the tau, the tau effect, T-A-U effect. And this is basically the same experiment, the other way around but you ask people to measure the distance between each light and the faster you turn the lights on the closer they seem and this is a weird effect that happens in the brain the brain is a wonderful thing and then you have the notion of time moving towards you or time moving you moving towards time so the example they use in the book that she uses is basically uh, Wednesday's Wednesday's meeting next Wednesday's meeting has been moved forward by two days now some people might argue what's two days after Wednesday some people might argue with Friday some might argue with Monday like, in my head I was like Friday two days later it's Friday but not all people see that way and what's going on there is that if you say that it's Friday it's called it has something to do with your like ego but it's not like bad ego like you are using your ego you think too much of yourself it's more like you moving towards time so Friday you move towards time if you think that it's a Monday you see time 
is moving towards you. So you stand still and time comes to you versus you running to time. Then you have the reminiscence bump. If you ask people in their 40s, 50s, um, about any memories that were like made them very happy or made them very of time where they were very afraid or something that made them very sad the memory they will bring up we most likely as scientists say be between the ages of 15 and 25 and why is that because the older we get the less novelty there is the more you know about the world the more things you have experienced so because of that you you kind of don't remember much versus between 15 and 25 where you have tons of new experiences there's so much novelty during that time that's usually when you have your first relationship you first have sex all these like first times that you can remember during this period of 15 25 and then we talk about the holiday paradox and what this means the, the definition is that Novelty refreshes our sense of time and that as soon as we leave our usual routines to visit somewhere new, we change time's tempo. Example is like visiting family for the holidays. The longer the trip, the stronger the sensation that something is not quite right. And to create a life that feels long and fulfilling, um, the scientist, I forgot his name, it was like David something. He he said that you have to travel constantly because new novelty creates new memories which make time feel longer and most of us to say but when I travel time you know I felt like it went so fast but that's because usually it's only it takes six to eight days for the novelty to wear off before kind of the tempo goes back to the same old thing but the good news is when you get back home the novelty is like refreshed for another few days before the freshness wears off. She has a whole chapter on how we mistakenly think about the future. And I found this very interesting. Um, not only, well, if you want to know about a quick rundown of the past, is that we use the past and the future. We use the past and the present to kind of build our future. So when you imagine something happening in the future, you use things like the law of attraction and all this you kind of bunch up a bunch of memories you have from the past to create the future. So if you think about a house, your dream house, you might have seen a house you loved on TV, you might have visited one, and kind of you take bits and pieces of every house you've seen and you kind of jumble them up and you're like, this is the dream house I want one day. So it's kind of like the whole notion of nothing is really original. It's probably because like everything is built from your past. but. And when we, we tend to think of the future in a very positive way. Now I'm not saying that's bad, but we usually have high expectations for that. So the example they use in the book is moving from a city like Chicago, where it's cold, so cold in the winter and it's like, you know, it's so much snow and all this, this shit. And you move to LA. You go to LA, you love it, you decide you want to move there. And you think of like, oh my god, I'll get to spend every day in the warm weather, you know, and then never have to deal with any rain, and you know, I get to meet new people, and there's like a new, and you start thinking of all the positive things and new experiences you can have in the how it's going to be amazing. But we always look at only the first, about the first year, and we look at all the positive stuff. We never think about three years in, five years in, when we eventually adjust to living in a new area where we're kind of feel the same. We think moving from Chicago to LA that we'll be happier living in LA. But really the happy the happier will just last a little while. You'll be up here for a little while, but you always come back to like your level. You always come back. This is your level. You have little bumps here and little bumps down, but you always adjust back. And that that's something that they talk about the future but it wasn't as interesting as the stuff that I've seen before. The book was great. I liked it. There were times it got a little boring and stale. I would say there were like two chapters and the chapters aren't short. It was about a 400 page book. Um, chapters aren't short, it's only about six chapters. So it's like $50, oh, $50, <laughs> think of my money. It's like 50 pages per chapter. So two of the chapters, Midtown, it was really hard to get through. I kind of sped read it a little bit. If I didn't see something that looked interesting, I kind of just like 
just like look through it real fast just to look like for any words that like caught my attention or like any if I seen a name I would like read a little bit and just if that was boring I'd keep going but uh, from what I gather from the book it helps me understand more of time so so when you think of time and you think of time as warping and you understand why something is happening focus you know when you're bored maybe you're stuck on a train your phone's dead you don't have a book on you you know how to to make time speed up you just focus on things focus on you know play games in your head you know see how many people are wearing green on the train and count them you're like he's wearing green he's going how many shades of green and you, you get into the details of everything of every like little you look for like indents in the in the windows or the poles of the train and you look for different kinds of colors and look for different kinds of people you look at girls who have makeup versus girls who don't have makeup and make a game of it and time will go fast you can always manipulate time and that's what the book is all about manipulating time to work for you so that's it for this video as always stay awesome